G'day guys. This is the GPX 4500, 4800, 5000 uh, modification. If you want to convert the N channel MOSFETs, the, um, the ones, the low voltage ones, can't do the high voltage ones. We don't have really good high voltage P channel FETs available, so we have to use the ends. The ends stay in there on the other side of the board, but I'll explain all that. Anyway, what you're looking at is where I have reconfigured the input stage to use very low noise P channel devices. And you can see that uh, there's two P channel devices in there. And uh, they uh, sort of look, look a little bit uh, cockeyed compared to the rest of the components. They're sort of uh, on an angle. And they are done that way because the only way you can put them in. And you have to get those little MOSFETs and you have to turn them upside down and bend the drain and source legs in the other direction so where they're normally pointing down you've got to make them point up and then the uh where you pointed them up you turn the device around so those legs are now pointing down and you can solder onto them and the gate leg is still pointing upwards because you don't bend that one um, at all you just leave that as it is and that naturally when you turn the device upside down will be pointing up and that's what you solder your resistor to your gate resistor um, this one here i think uh, normally i would use anything between 10 ohms and 100 ohms on these but i was doing some isolation tests and i actually have got some 330 ohm resistors on the gate they're still perfectly fine to switch these on and off uh, so i was just um, having a look at the isolation and i can probably maybe point out a few things when we look at waveforms as to why you would want to do that um, first of all let's have a look um, i really need a very very small pointy pointy poker device um, even a pen won't cut it, will it? Because it's, uh, hang on a sec. I'll get something very small. Because if I, I'll, I can easily just cover up a whole MOSFET if I point at it. Um, okay. I've got a spare multimeter lead here. That'll do as a poker or pointer or both. Now I've got to get right in here too. I can't work from behind the camera. It'd be too hard so i'll get right in here and hopefully this makes sense and i'm going to put my magnifying glasses on so normally where this black thing is here that was originally a n channel fet and over here originally that was a n channel fet as well both the same if you have a look at the markings on the FETs, the uh, markings are W7, and it might even be W7F. That is a 2N7002, which is a N-channel FET. Fairly good spec specifications on that device as an N-channel. So that's that one and that one. And I have actually replaced the um diode here you said it's a smaller package uh, which uh is uh the same it's meant to be the same as that one which is um bav 99 and uh that's that's it there they're all labeled a7 so bav 99s are a7 could have a um another letter after it which just confuses the issue uh, but anyway, that's um, that as a diode. That's a diode. Now, the thing we want to get onto is this device here. That is the BF908. 
and there is another one. Sorry, where is it? Down here. There are, it's all covered in white paint. It's really hard to see. I should have scraped the paint off them. There's the other one. So you got one BF908 for this op amp. That's one channel. And another one for that op amp, which is the second channel. And input FET for this, input FET for this, and diode protection there for that, that for that. And uh, the um, gate resistors, if you can notice, where I put it onto the gate of this device here, which is upside down, and cockeyed, and I'll explain that why that has to be. You can't put a P channel device where an N channel was in the same footprint because everything will be around the wrong way. It won't conduct. You'll just be conducting through the body diode and get lots of losses. You cannot do that. So it has to be legs, the drain and source legs bent the other way, flipped upside down, and mounted as such. But I'll, it might be very hard to see. It, it probably is very hard to see, but we'll get right into that. Anyway, let's have a look. We have the gate onto this resistor here. That should be, look, for all, all purposes, make it, make it 100 ohm, 100 ohm um, resistor. It doesn't have to be surface mount, but the smaller the componentry, the less um, capacitance effects you're going to have to other parts of the board, less um, pickup. It's a much better idea to go very small. And on the other end of the resistor, which it goes gate through the resistor to a small wire, and a small wire then goes to this resistor, same value as that one, make it 100 ohms, even though I've got 300. And 30s in there don't worry about that you can copy it if you want you can you can run no resistors you can run probably up to 500 ohms you probably run a thousand ohms it, this is just an experiment you want to see you want to try and get um, isolation between these two if you're doing anything in cancel mode and because i've got this set up with a twin coil set up with one out of phase i want to use cancel mode to check for noise and i want to throw it in the mono for um, signal cancellation i don't want any crosstalk that's basically what it is crosstalk means the amount of uh, signal getting back onto the gate uh, and onto the gate of this and each putting a little bit of signal into each other which if it's out of phase it's going to uh, really screw up the isolation and it's going to get noise but it's it's what i'm doing now as you can see here, you go through this resistor to this one that's connected to that resistor that goes to the gate there. There's a gate connection on this device here. And you keep following the wire through and it goes onto the bottom leg of that BF908. Now the BF908 basically um, supplies current to these devices, the uh, op amps. When the transmit circuit is um, off, because what 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 actually happens in transition stages that uh, when the, when these things turn off, they don't have any um, path to ground, so these things fly up um, and basically uh, they can do anything; they can even oscillate. Uh, so they will go hard hard negative or hard positive and when when it comes on time to receive it has to switch that transitions um, to be stable and these devices here the bf908 the way they're connected there's a 10k resistor somewhere on the other side of the board it's in series um, with uh, inverting and non-inverting inputs and basically what it does when it's in transmit it partially shorts out inverting and non-inverting through 10k ohm resistor which is enough to hold this thing around about zero volts on the output basically between the plus and minus rails so you don't want it up here and you don't want it down there because it when it comes back on it has settling time and it could 
do very small oscillations into the receive cycle, it'll make noise. So that's why that's done. Um, a lot of people out there who make these detectors will just look at that. They won't do this um, elaborate um, sort of biasing uh, setup. They will just use something like, you know, um, 50,000 ohm resistor uh, to ground. That's what they'll do and just leave it there. And that in itself can introduce noise. Uh, and also, not that it's much, it, it can, you can get a little bit of signal loss back through the resistor to ground when you think about it. So a lot of people do that. And a lot of people don't run this whole biasing transistor switch system. They just, they use a 1K resistor and a, and a, and a damn uh, 4148 diode. And uh, that that is not a good way to do it. Even though it works, it's noisy, it's lossy, you won't. You, you'll lose a lot of um, signal that you want. It introduces a lot of noise. Um, you get thermal noise because you, you're cooking the poor resistor in series. You're stressing out the poor diode, trying to clamp the flyback voltage. So this is, this is a better way to go. But every time you use semiconductor junctions, they always will introduce noise. So you've got to get the lowest noise uh, devices, even the uh, high voltage ones, they have to be low noise, low on resistance, minimalistic on the capacitance values, and that's a it's a trade off. It's a big ask trying to get low on resistance, and also trying to get low intrinsic capacitance on all the uh, MOSFET elements to each other and externally. Um, it's it's damn difficult. But there is trade-offs. Now, the first ones of these detectors ever made had the NP system where it, uh, on, on, say, the old um, SD detectors, and even the GPs, but they got a bit more refined. And they were using um, ZX devices. And if you had a look at the specification on ZX devices used back then, they were, they're called telephone um, ringer or telephone hook devices. They are rated for about 200 or 240 volt and uh, um, had a on resistance best case of about 10 ohms. So if you got two devices, I think one was 6 and one was 10, 16 ohms resistance, um, instantaneously you have signal loss through those devices. And they're extremely low capacitance though, so you can switch them really fast. But uh, you want to you want to try and make a straight wire from your coil to the input of your op amps, but it, you can't do that because the fly back voltage from the transmit into the coil will blow it to pieces. The only way around that is using a double D coil or a concentric coil where the receive winding is separate and uh, just put your own damping resistor across it. Um, you, you shouldn't even use a damping resistor across it. You should probably utilize something like this system across that, but you can use much smaller devices. And, uh, you know, this, because it's um, basically only you don't want to just um, short the, the coil out during those flyback um, events and uh, the, the immediate period afterwards. You want to dissipate that energy. So, because it's not directly coupled, there's not a, a, a lot of energy goes into the uh, separate coil. But anyway, I'm getting off the path, and I'm going into other areas which I'm not meant to be doing. So if we have a look here, the um, control voltage on the BF908, basically this, this is turned on and off in counter phase to the end channels or the end channels that were here, because um, it's switching that um, dual gate MOSFET more or, less, more or less across the inverting and non-inverting inputs. So it's a, it's a bias stabilization. And also, by doing what it does, it limits the gain um, of these devices in the uh, transmit mode, so it doesn't pick up anything and start amplifying it and shoving it up into the poor old 
4051 or 4053, whatever it is. Um, and that is just connected here. There's, there's a constant. I'll tell you how this thing's configured. Up here on the top pin, there's a constant voltage. It just stays there all the time. That's, that's gate one. Gate two down here is the one that's turned on and off. That's controlled via the ADG333 um, on, on these. Uh, this, oh, this, this one down here, the one closest to me on the far right-hand side, that goes to ground. That goes to quiet ground. That's done separately uh, through the shallow wire, but we'll get on to that maybe. And um, then this one here, the top one, is the one that uh, goes off to a 10K resistor. And then that goes on to pin 3, which is a non-inverting input. And the other end of that resistor goes to ground. So as this switches on, it just puts 10K across those two terminals. That's pretty basic. It just shuts it up keeps it stable and then when the receive comes on basically this just turns off and it's no longer the 10k is no longer across it it's uh, basically connected through the transistors oh, sorry through the mosfets it gets its um its um, bias voltage back that way and th that 10k resistor and the, uh, the device is basically matched so the transition points it keeps these things pretty close to zero volt level between the plus five and plus or negative five plus five negative five and the uh, middle voltage there causes zero volts which means it's got no output uh, either way and it's stable it'll sit there and be stable and then when a receive comes on there's no big transitions and no hiccups no ripple no bouncing no nothing so it just uh, amplifies straight off the receive line and you know keeps it keeps it nice and um, under control so let's have a look at a different or oh, actually how about i turn this on i'll show you the waveforms on here now what i've got here i've got um if i remember red the red one i'm oh, sorry i got this around the wrong way damn Oh, not, not, no big deal. I'll just have to explain it. Um, you got uh, one of the one of these going on to the output of that the uh, switched sorry switched input on gate two of that BF nine hundred eight. That's this one here. That's a wire I've got onto the oscilloscope probe, and I've actually used a through through plate hole through the board, and because I couldn't get onto the uh, the gate inputs because I put the, the devices are covering them now. So what I did, I put a uh, a wire through a through plate on the board, and I've got that soldered to the gates of the um, N FETs on the, on the main input. See what would happen if because if these were the N FETs in here, the gates would all be connected together, so they all switch at the same time. And because I put P's in here, we have to invert it. I'm using the inverted voltage of that BF908 on gate two to switch those MOSFETs because the MOSFETs need the reverse voltage of the N channels. So anyway, I'll show you what I what I mean. I'll just get this, I'll fire it up. It will be noisy because I've got the oscilloscope probes hanging on the gates. Um, and with any stray noise is going to couple onto those probes and modulate the gates of these MOSFETs. So it'll sit there and it'll, it'll do its 50 hertz. But anyway, we want to get onto the oscilloscope screen now. I've probably got this zoomed in too far, or have I not? Oh, okay. Hopefully it's stable enough and not flickering around too much. It's stable here, but it, it clashes with the frame rate, scan rate of these cameras, and it might be going wop, wop, wop all over the place. I don't know. I can't, can't tell until I upload it. But if you have a look at that, that's on channel one, channel two. Uh, I've just got the voltages offset so you can see um, what's what. And if we look here, I follow the, um, 
on channel one, which you wouldn't know which one's which, would you? Uh, on channel one, I have the um, BF908 gate two signal, and that is, I'll just put my hand in there and wiggle it. Hopefully, you can, oh, hang on, I might have to go on the other side because all you're going to see is my arm doing that. So hang on. Okay, this is channel one. You can basically see that it's got the three dots of the three small pulses. And actually, that's it's actually the spaces between the pulses, but anyway. And the top one, you can just we can call it that anyway, long pulses and short pulses. Three it's in normal mode, so you're gonna have three and one. Okay. And if we have a look at um, the input FET, the N-channel FETs on this line here, if you see the bottom waveform there, it looks a bit dicky. And that's um, something I'm going to have to look at. Um, the, the, this is, it's, on high, it's high voltage, it's blocking, it's doing a lot of things. So I'd expect probably a little bit of mess there. But... Uh, you know, it's not as good if you look at the P, the P channel one. The P channel one uh, is crisp and very, very straight. It it just looks better. But maybe this high voltage one is getting a little bit stressed out for what it has to do. Uh, and the way it um, connects up on a couple of diode drops um, to ground reference as well uh, before it goes into the um, small... MOSFETs. But anyway, to prove it that the timing is now the same, I'm going to invert one channel. And voila! There you go. Because we swap the, we have to swap the voltage, the polarity of the voltage, or the uh, control signals, to the P, we had to invert it. And that's why I'm taking it off that uh, BF908, because that voltage is um, perfectly inverted and that's driving um, those MOSFETs the right way. If, if I didn't in, have that, uh, if I connected the P channels directly to the N input, uh, it would be operating completely opposite and it wouldn't work. So we've got to invert the control signal to run P channels. And that's what that... Uh, Signal line there on gate two of that BF908 is doing. But uh, yeah, it's got some uh, interesting looking um, notches there. What I'd, what I'd probably do, I'd run some extra channels and I'd, I'd probably overlay that with the transmit waveform. Uh, you can see where it all fitted in. And, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of things in here we can go and poke and prod at, but... Uh, yeah, the best way to do this is probably do screenshots and mark things out. Anyway, we'll turn this off because I don't need this on. Now, I've got a, a scrappy old board here. Hang on, I'm just going to... I might... It's a, a scrappy old board. This this um, blew up. I can't remember the whole scenario of it. Uh, anyway, it was dead. Oh, we want to go down there. Now, you can see on here, you can see the uh, devices. They've had a the, um, bit of the paint scraped off. And uh, there is a uh, a diode missing there. There's two big solder blobs right in the middle of the screen. That was a, uh, um, a one-amp diode there, which was taken for some reason. Maybe I couldn't find... Some and I just stole it off that to put on another board because it had blown up. But uh, what I might do, I'm going to put this on the bench and I'm going to put the camera on it and I'll point it out because it, doing it by hand is a bit, uh, yeah, all over the place. So I'm not going to do that. Now, oh God, it's telling me low battery. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, that's the, uh, not, not the detector or anything, it's the actual uh, iPhones coming up with low battery. Uh, it's unbelievable. I had it charged. I have one, of, it sits on one of these um, 
um, you know, is drop on charges. At a wireless, we'll call it a wireless charger, okay? <laughs> and uh, what happens, it gets knocked and it doesn't connect and it doesn't charge the phone. It's a stupid idea. I'd rather plug it in any day because you know it's, it's positively connected and it's not going to fall off. So we'll get rid of that one. I'll get rid of that. And I'll put this board there. And I'll just bend this camera down. And move the board over. What I can't, it doesn't even, when you got it, this thing doing video, you can't even see how much battery you have left. It's an absolute, you know, talk about no forethought um, with this stuff. It really is quite uh, painful. So what we want to do, and I'm going to actually have to do this. I'm going to do it to show you how to do it so you don't destroy your detector. So I was going to turn this uh, soldering iron on. By the way, I found out this uh, new soldering iron I, I have, um, of all things. Uh, it's, it's actually got a switch mode power supply in it, and it is noisy. If I turn the soldering iron on when I'm doing detector testing, <laughs> It introduces a lot of interference. I can't win. I can't win. So I thought to myself, do I pull it apart and um, can prop, probably properly earth the switch mode and uh, magnetically shield it? Or do I resurrect my old one after I bought the new one? Ah, oh, dear me, I don't know. Can't win. Can't win. Anyway, let's get on to this. Now, I'm going to have to wait for that iron just to heat up a bit. I've got it cranked up at uh, 356. I usually run it about 330, 340, um, because I, I don't want to uh, stuff up. Make it make it hotter. It works better. Put it that way. It's, it's going to be hard to do, I think. So we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. So what we want to do, say on this board here, this has got the uh, end channel fets in it. So... I want to get over this way a little bit because I'm going to stick my head down there and so I can see what I'm doing. I don't want to, I, the camera's in the way, so, you know, it's, it's not really the perfect thing. I should have the camera. You know, I just haven't got what everyone else has and these things that stick up and lay over and all the rest. I've just got this, so you make the best of it. Okay. So this one here is one that has to go, and this one here is one that has to go. What I would do, I can't even see what I'm doing really, because I've got to keep my head down low. I did grab solder, didn't I? I was making sure. Okay. It's a bit of a... It's got some contamination of some sort on the tip, but look at it. It wouldn't take the solder. But, come on. Where are the angles I'm working on? There we go. So we want to get on the two connections, the two legs there, and also on the front. I can see the front one. I can't see the back one. So I'm working blind. But see, if I go back, front, back, front, watch this. There, there's your, your, your transistor's gone. Okay? It just fell off. So we want that one gone, and we want this one gone. Flood it with solder. Just keep the heat onto it, like so. Make sure it, it actually does do what it's meant to do. That was that came off too easy. Normally they're a absolute nightmare to get off. There you are, two of them off. That that was that was that simple. That was that simple. So let's move this around a bit. And they've got the top top light flaring in the back of the camera, so I don't know what I'm pointing it at. Okay. So that's what you want to do. We just want to get rid of that one and that one. You don't want to touch any of the others. Leave them there. They are, they are happy and healthy as they are. Okay. That, that's the only two you want to get rid of. Where I've left those little solder 
And so I'll get the soldering iron around the thing again. And the only other point you want to get onto is there. I put a blob on it on purpose. I don't normally do that. It's just for visuals. Or that one. Because you've got those are both connected to the same point in the circuit. So if I actually there goes the cutters on the floor. If I actually get the beeping the beeping multimeter, I'll move it over there. Oh hope Hopefully I can still, I was trying to get the multimeter in frame, but uh, hang on. Now I've got to wrap my uh, one arm around the back of the tripod to do this with multimeter leads. Uh, just the way it is. So if we, yeah, no, I'm going to bang it. I'm going to move it over, move it there. I'm going to try and do it this way. Thing is, I should have the iPhone a lot higher, but then it, it won't zoom in as as well, so it'd make it life harder. But I think I've got everything in screenshot there. If I, you got to remember these devices here. This one was, this one's upside down compared to that one. So if we go on here, that's the gate leg, and we go on the gate leg of this one. Okay, it's continuity. Can't really get onto it now because I've got my head banged over. There we go. Yep, we have continuity between there and there. So that's the original gates that go to the end channel FETs. You don't want to use this and you don't want to use that. We are only using drain and source here. And we are only using drain and source on this one. And that's how we're going to hook our MOSFET up dead bug style, which means I'm going to have to get one. I'm going to have to put one in and show you how I do it. Um, I did have I did have those uh, FETs. I did mention the number two in the previous video, but I'll mention it again. Now I was going to find... I probably... Put them away. Um, let me have a look. See, I thought I would have left them out, but I didn't, did I? Um, no, I, I did leave them out. I put a uh, detector down in front of them, so I can't see them. Okay, we have to do this again anyway. These are the devices that I am going to put in. The, these, oops, dear me, look at that, there we go. RSM002PO3. Um, after the two, normally there's a T, but uh, yeah. RSM002TPO3. They're P channel. P channel, got them from Mouser. They're not expensive. But what I have to do now is show you how to turn one into a dead bug style transistor. What I might have to do here, I might just move this right over here a bit. I need room. I need room. No, I'm not getting it. We'll get one of those out. I'll get rid of that board. We don't need that board at the moment. Okay. I'll get one of these and we'll just drop one straight out. Remember about um, anti static? Earth it, ground it, make it the same potential. This has um, got tape on it, so if I just um, pull in the tape and then pop it out, there it is. That's what's going in. So there's two of those that go in, of course, one on each channel. I've got to be careful how I do this, otherwise it's going to... I'll just put it over there. Now, normally what I would do, I would just get some um, good electrical tweezers, um, which have flown the coop, because uh, I tidied up and I haven't uh, um, put everything back where it's meant to go. 
at the moment. Uh, it's probably in a box of mixed tools. That's all right. I've got a detector there in the way that can go over there. Now, see, even with doing this at the moment, um, I've just about lost all my bench space because it, it everything just takes over and uh, it grows. Okay. Okay, found it. Found it. It was under my test and measurement stick. So these ones will do. These aren't the ones I really want to use, but they'll do. Uh, but these things. Actually, I'm, no, I'll probably go leave it um, zoomed in. But uh, bear with me. Now, notice how I put my hand there and then touch this. So I don't put any strange potentials on it. Not that it makes much difference these days, but it can. It depends. It all depends. Okay. I don't know if I can actually do this on here. God, that's going to be look crazy. So I can't see what I'm doing. I can't do this looking in the camera. It's 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 just I can't concentrate properly or something. But all I want to do. I just, I don't know if you can even see it. I've just bent that leg round the wrong way. And that's what I want to do. I'll, I'll do the other one. So you have a single one on the drain connection. And I'll just pop it there so you can actually see it. There we go. I don't know. Oh, try again. Okay. I don't know if you can actually tell there. But the gate connection, which I'll do it around the standard configuration so you know. I left the gate connection pointing down. Okay. The source connection there is now pointing up in the air and so is that. And when we mount it on the board, it goes like that. It goes upside down. And the only thing you want to have sticking up is the gate leg because that's what you solder a uh, small resistor to. So just as an example, I'll get this board back here again. This is going to be, this is so damn awkward. You've got no idea. Stupid tripod is so, it's, it's um, a full-size tripod. It's just in the way. Uh, I'll try and I'll try and do it like this or something. I've got to get it out of the way. I just can't can't manipulate around it. It's you know it's like trying to do brain surgery with an elephant sitting in your lap. It's it's just difficult. Okay. And of course these these are magnetic. Okay. Now which one we're going to do? How about we do maybe the one that's closest. Okay, all touch, touch, just in case things blow up, they won't. Okay, and on here, because there's a little bit, we're going from there to there. And we're going to cover up that gate. I thought these were alloy. They're a little bit magnetic. Strange. So I've got that sitting there like like thus. I'm still going to work around the tripod to get the soldering iron. Can't win. Okay. Now, normally I would be closer on the bench doing this, but I'm not. Come here. Uh, Murphy's Law wants to fly off. Get round. Oh, please don't be magnetic. I hate that. Look at it, it's magnetic as. So I'm trying to put things down and it just uh okay. Hold it down the solar line. 
I've got the, the, the uh, tweezers are resting on this big capacitor here and it's pushing me sideways. It is really difficult to do. Um, like I, I can do it quite easily, but it's just difficult because everything is working against me. Anyway, I'm going to grab this and I'll stick it in. Line her up. As long as you've got one leg down, it's good. And the other leg here, I, I offset it a little bit. I was going to put a, a tiny bit of solder on it just to bring it across. That's connected. We're going to tin up the gate wire. The gate leg. It's hard to tell but because it's so small. But that, that's in position. That's soldered on in position. Uh, now, to put on a resistor, I've actually got to go and choose a resistor. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? I've got uh, every resistor, but I want to... How about, just for example, on this one, say we want to make sure you want to switch it really hard and fast. Not This is, this is total overkill. You can, you can run a lot more than uh, what I'm doing. Let's have a look here. What do we got? Uh, I want to use something I've got a, a lot of. Um, okay. That'll do. By the way, when I do surface mount work, I'm always using either, depends where it is, zero point one percent tolerance resistors or one percent um I, I don't use five percent resistors and on some cases i use point oh oh one percent resistors if i'm doing um output matching and stuff like that so here's a little thing of resistors there i'm going to pull back the tape get one out the all these are well, there's only one left on that yeah that's all right there's plenty there but i just grabbed a, a stick that was used so i'll stick that there try to that's a resistor that's nice and small and with this too you really it's very difficult to do normally i stick them down on double-sided tape like um, only masking tape in a circle so it doesn't stick on the soldering iron and disappear into the ball of solder on the end of the iron because they're so small. That's that's normally what happens. It because uh, because I'm trying to do this um, here. I'm just gonna just quickly tin it. And I'm gonna hold it down with the solder. How's that? Um, grab it the resin will make it stick to the board and here I'll never get the angle I want holding it like this but I'll try okay put that resistor on top of the MOSFET if you can see that to make sure the metallization on that leg is not anywhere near the uh, source connection here or there and it's not because the way i've done it it can't but if if you do it just make sure um, that you don't do that you can move it around you can point it up the thing is with uh, surface mount if you angle it upwards and you tap it It'll break the ceramic. They're that fragile. So, like so is uh, okay. I just tinned up the other end of of that uh, device. Now, all you need to connect it, I was going to get some fine, very fine wire. I've got some uh, very fine wire here. Where is where is the cutters on the floor? There you go. That's right, they fell on the floor. So we'll just get some fire wire. Um, God. If 
they hold the wire in the right spot, just fine wire. That's just look at the size of my fingers to that. What's my thumb? But you know, it's very fine if you look at um, compared to the enamel wire on that. So I'll strip it back a bit. You can you can you can strip it properly and have the ends nice and clean or whatever. You can actually um, whoopsie pull a strand out of that if you really wanted to, and just use a strand. But I'm going to just twist it together like I normally do. And use the whole lot, but this is tinned wire makes it easier to use. Where is my iron? Okay, got to go around that way for the iron this time. Now, all you got to do to make this thing work, and you go to two of these, of course. I'll just tin that up. And it's going to go that way, so I'll do it this way. I've got that on there, like so. Let's make sure you can see that. I just, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore, can I? Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, that's pushing it. That's as far as it goes. So that's there. I'll just pull the board back a bit. Okay. So what you're doing is you're going to do the other one the same with the resistor. And just join the wire to where this wire goes or you can even go to that other bf um, 908 you can actually get this one and stick that wire there or on this one when you put it in you can stick the wire uh, via the resistor there it's the same thing if i put the multimeter there and the multimeter there it'll beep it's the same same uh, electrical connection so oops okay now what I'll do, I'll get this thing here, wire, heat my blob of solder. It's on. So that's connected up. It's that simple, like I say. Snip off the excess. And that is one in position there. That's one in position. Um, now you gotta remember this board doesn't work this board's got fractures through it so I'm not going to actually do the other side and make a really nice job of it and all because it's totally pointless on this board uh, where I have done it on this other one here so we'll go back for a zoom we'll get rid of this that shows you how to do it okay I didn't destroy any tracks it's very very easy nice and neat and if you want to get really technical spray it up with some isopropyl alcohol and get a cotton bud on it and uh, clean up all that uh, residue that's normally what you would do now I'll get this one back here again so it was pretty easy all we had to do is at the way that one there is stuck there on this, I didn't put the resistor that way. I've actually put it that way. Doesn't really make any difference as long as you can connect to it and it doesn't short out. So there's the, you just look at the orientation of this one. Remember, these MOSFETs, the P-channel ones, are flipped upside down and the legs bent in the other direction. Um, so you can solder to the board. Otherwise, you can't solder to the board. You'll be soldering legs in sticking up like a dead bug and you can't uh, do that you got to push it down down and uh, leave the uh, gate lead up so you can put your resistor to it this one i've done the resistor goes um to the i mean the wire connects to the resistor on this one and just connects up to the other resistor because uh, they're, they're both um done in it's all parallel so it doesn't make any difference but if you wanted to you could cut this wire here and connect it up on the leg, the bottom left-hand leg of this, which is the same as that anyway. It doesn't make any difference. It'll work just as well. So I hope that's explained how to do that. The wool's coming up with low battery again. Hopefully we're still working and it's still clicking away. Um, but that is how that works.
So if you want to do that, <clears throat> like I say, try it and see if you get lower noise. Keep your original transistors just in case for some reason. Um, I, like I say, I haven't done this with extensive tests. I've tested it out in the field. It works fine. I've tested it on bench test. It works fine. I've looked for noise and this does seem to exhibit lower noise. Uh, so that's all I've really got to go. It's, it's like a, you could call it sort of a, uh, um, an experiment as such. Now, where I've used those uh, MOSFETs, the specification on these P-channels is really good, by the way, except uh, I think they're rated at 30 volts and not 60, but there's not 60 volts around this part of the circuit. Okay? Don't have to worry about that. There's not even 20 volts, 15 volts. So 20 volts is getting a little bit low. 30 volts, yeah, no problem. That's okay. It's a lot of headroom there. Uh, but you got to remember that when these uh, detectors were designed, you know, certain parts were available, certain parts weren't. They used what they uh, wanted to use. Now, even if, as a, uh, another one, if you want to, there is a better spec device than the 2N7002N, which these normally have there. This is in factory um, setting, okay? If you go on to Mouser, I always, we use Mouser all the time. We used to use DigiKey, but for some reason, they started asking lots of stupid questions about, are you going to use this uh, to build nuclear missiles and uh, def rays and whatever else? I got tired of it, so I use Mouser. I never asked anything like that. So Mouser get all our work now. I don't deal with stupidity. I call it stupidity because it is. It's just ridiculous. So sorry, DigiKey, but uh, your stupid lines of questioning and holding up my orders push me to the brink of uh, having nothing more to do with you. So if if you have a look... Whoopsie, how's that? Oh, better zoom out because you won't be able to see it. Okay, these are made by that ROHM company, Rome or ROM or whatever they call themselves. Um, RK7002. There is two types of this uh, device. One has been made obsolete and the newer one has far better specifications. You can uh, put the uh, RK version in. I think um, the new version ends with, it might be BTA on the end, on the, on the uh, end of the number. But um, they are far better devices. But I still found, even though swapping the ends over with the better devices, I still found that I would get lower noise using the P's. So you can copy that just if you can copy that layout there that's as far in as I can zoom I'll see if I can get in a little bit closer and right above it so it's square on but you don't want to put your devices in cockeyed um, that would be terrible now I'll go right down with this and then I'll put the, pull this back it might make it easier to see uh, oops I don't want to go there I'm too far over there we are. Okay. So just notice where the where the um, gates are sticking up on those little devices. It's got a little bit of resin on one of the devices. The uh, one up on the right hand side, um, bottom. So that's um, where that uh, resistor. Notice one resistor's around one way and one's the other. It probably flipped around when I was grabbing up the tweezers and I didn't want to play with it anymore, so I just stuck it on there and got it done. So you can see the wire, pretty pretty simple. Resistor to resistor to gate two on the BF908. And uh, it's, it's that simple. There you go. See, by doing that and just having in, using the inverted gate driver um, takeoff point, uh, you can now um, run peas in there.
So it's basically exactly the same as the same configuration as all the GP detectors, which work really good in uh, um, normal timings. Uh, for me, they did. I don't know for anyone else. A lot of people had difficulty with normal timings, and it's probably because um, uh, on my detectors, they all had uh, variable front end gain. And I also put variable frequency in as well, so I could uh, um, alter the uh, pulse spacings for if I'm looking for very, very tiny gold or I'm looking for uh, larger, deeper stuff. And also, in some instances, with uh, um, any ground minerals that you know could possibly have a longer time constant to die off than others, you can uh, crank the um, timings back and leave, leave larger spaces before the receiver comes on. Uh, you don't do that with small gold because it'll die off before the receiver comes on. <laughs> not, not saying that it will, but it, you might have a diminished signal. But uh, you can always wind it the other way and, and uh, improve your small gold capability. E even an old, um, got any of the detectors, if you uh, increase the, um, the, the amount of samples, in, like basically shorten the uh, transmit receives uh, timing samples, it's going to be more responsive to small gold. You get more samples, you get uh, um, probably um, a better uh, resolution per swing because you're getting more samples per per swing with the coil um yeah the whole the whole thing just seems to work better on optimizing those um spacings and uh time lengths for what gold you're after you know you're not going to go out and use a great big 25 inch coil and have it cranked up on fast timings that's that's totally ridiculous and uh the other way around you don't do that either uh, you drop your tight, you drop your uh, spacings down, and uh, use big coils. Or if you're using tiny coils, crank them right up because you're going for small gold. Why not optimize the detector for small gold as well? But anyway, guys, if you want to try this, don't blow your detectors up. Make sure it's um, uh, power's not on. The mylars are uh, gently pulled out um, from the power where it goes in. You can see that in my other videos how I do all that sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know whereabouts. There's, there's over 300 videos now, so <laughs> I don't know where it lives. But the information is there, and uh, it's very simple to do. It's not hard. There's nothing you need to do. Um, if you have a look on the other side here, where I put the wire through, I might as well show that. But uh, there it is. See it there? That's that white wire. And I just meant splot straight in the gate connection of those high voltage first um, input FET. So that's what I was measuring that, uh, you know, switching waveform from. I was measuring it off the uh, drive to those MOSFETs. Those two MOSFETs there, you can see, um, they actually, they're the ones I, I've, I've actually put different ones in there, but that was something I had made up specifically. You can't buy them. Uh, and it was uh, sort of a bit of an experiment. But anyway, they work really well. And they got lower capacitance. Funny about that. Anyway, that um, way I've got it. I've also, <clears throat> if you noticed there as well, um, I've also jerry rigged in a gate drive resistor. That's not normally there on the circuit, that's that resistor all by itself smack bang in the middle of the circuit board and like i say i do lots of refinements lots of testing if it needs it it needs it if it doesn't it doesn't and yeah that and that connects on to that p channel um, bipolar transistor sitting there the bc um, 857 and that goes down to that one in the middle uh, there with the, the thin paint on it. That that's just protection diode. That's just the BAV99, and that then goes to that uh, ADG triple three uh, through that resistor which I've changed. There you can see it next to the chip. Second one down. Um, I think that normally is 100 ohms. I've changed it to something. But like I say, uh, 
if I ch I change I change things and look at it and then did it make an improvement? Did it not? Uh, and I'll go each way. You know, I might go from 100 ohms. I might even go down to you know 20 ohms, or I might go to um, 150 ohms, 250, something like that. I would just dial in different values there and uh, whatever gave the cleanest um, switching waveforms. It kept the transistors in saturation, so you know you're not going to get any um, variation in any part of uh, the on resistance, and uh, yeah, and uh, try and minimise any um, you know back talk or cross talk, anything like that from signal coupling into the gate and going back into the circuitry. Most of it gets squashed out. It's a minimal anyway, but uh, we're only talking minimal signals. We're talking nanovolts on all this stuff and. You know, it uh, will it will um, stuff up if you give it the chance. It will become noisy if you give it the chance. So, like I say, this is one of my very very early detectors. Have a fair whack of stuff done to it. Um, like I say, there's there's, there's changes everywhere. There's, there's just changes in these ones. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed that. How to do it? I hope I hope everyone understands it. You know. I'm not getting paid for doing this. It's um, just the information I'm putting out there. I don't have a lot of times to answer a lot of questions on this stuff, um, you know. But if you do, if if there's a common thread to something, yeah, make mention of it. If you didn't see something or you want to know something, but uh, you know, don't barrage me with questions because I'll get no work done. Speaking of work, I'm going to do some detectors now. So uh, I'll get this up. You can all have a look at it and tell me what you think. Catch us.